Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the House of European Football here in EO for the 2023-24 UEFA Women's Champions League group stage draw. It was only a few months ago that Barcelona and Wolfsburg dropped the curtain on another historic Women's Champions League season. Our first sold-out final in Eindhoven came on top of the best attended season ever. More than 700,000 fans across the continent attended our matches. And an average of more than 11,000 makes the Women's Champions League the best attended club competition in the world. That is not so bad after only two years into the new format. But you know what's better? That we had records in 25 different countries. And not just a few, because that's the Women's Champions League too. In other words, we are reaching more people in more regions and providing more opportunities for more women and girls to play. To play in iconic stadia clearly helped this cause and we need to keep doing that. Parc de Bruns, Allianz Arena, to name a few. But the interest wasn't just high in stadiums. Viewers from more than 230 countries and territories watch this competition with substantial year-on-year -year increases and a record viewership for that nail-biting final. On the pitch, the competition was equally Im impressive. Formidable ties, bold newcomers and football that was simply at its best. And we also only had a short period of time before we were back to watching our Women's Champions League stars in action in Australia and New Zealand. The strength of European women's football at this FIFA Women's World Cup was on full display. A brilliantly organized tournament, by the way, from FIFA. Congratulations to our champion Spain for having won this trophy for the first time, to England for having pushed them right until the end, and to Sweden, whose win in the third place match did not only mean a bronze medal for them, but also three European medals in the first time in history. Yet we also got a little bit lucky, we have to admit that, because teams from all over the world showed what women's football is made of today and that competitiveness is ever increasing. Yet the collective success of our national teams is also a testament to the hard work being done across the continent by not only national associations or leagues, but also by you, the clubs, who released almost 60% of all players in this tournament. At least one player from all 32 participating teams calls Europe home. These are incredible stats. You have laid the foundation for them to be successful. And now, now it's finally time again that the group stage knocks on our door, the ultimate stage of club football. The season has already gotten off to a thrilling start. Uh, in the qualifying rounds, we uh, had bold newcomers coming through, matches decided in the last minutes, and even some big n names falling over the first hurdle. What once was 57 teams has been narrowed down now to the ultimate 16 who will compete in this year's group stage. So let's take a look at all the contenders. Only one of them, of course, will be ground champions in May in Bilbao.
And these are all the contenders. As you know, I'm a lucky woman. I never need to do draws on my own. And as usual, we have invited a special guest. She's a great competitor. She has played this competition with two different countries or clubs, Arsenal and Bayern, with whom she also won many domestic titles and, in the case of Bayern, also the German Cup. She made sure that her country qualified for the first time in 2017 to the UEFA Women's Euro, and they just did it again uh, last year. But most of all, she is a fantastic person and leader, captaining her national team, Austria, and making an incredible 83 appearances. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at who she is. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm applause to Vicky Schneiderbeck. Hi, Vicky. Hey. So hey. good to see you. I can't believe you made it because you had some real struggles to get here. <laughs> so even more, a big thank you uh, from all of us for coming to today's draw. Vicky, the world of football on the pitch has lost you last year. You're retired, uh, which many people are still very sad about. And the first thing you do is to do a world trip. Maybe you want to want to tell us how, how this went and uh, perhaps want to share some secrets with this very trustworthy audience. <laughs> uh, I will. <laughs> so first of all, thank you also for inviting me. It's nice to be here too. And yeah, I will share some secrets. But first of all, it was really a pleasure and a privilege to be able to travel for almost free months um, after my retirement last year and yeah I was expecting and also I think a lot of other people were expecting me to lie on the beach and uh, start crying because <laughs> I was missing football but uh, the reality was that I was sitting or lying on a beach with a cocktail or maybe two <laughs> and <laughs> yeah I starts continue yeah no I, I felt really at peace with my decision and um, that's what I'm trying to say I think it was the right decision at the right time and I'm I'm happy so I'm sure many people cried that you didn't play anymore, but uh, a good time to reflect on what's next, right? I think that's a fair way to summarize it. Um, you know, when you talk to former teammates of yours, everyone praises Vicky as the best. A me, as an opponent, I can only say you are the best opponent. And that says a lot already about someone. You've been always a person who has been interested in more in life, more than football and educating yourself. What is up for you next? Can I win you over to become a football administrator? <laughs> Um, yeah, unfortunately, I was very uh, unlucky with a lot of injuries and um, that was hard at the time when I was not able to play these times, but it also made me think and make me want to prepare for the career after the career. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really what helped me um, to find the serenity when I was playing or also the f other focus or feeling of success while I was injured actually Absolutely. and in the end it helped me to transition from being a professional player to a more normal life and I think yeah that's why I also love what I'm doing now I'm doing keynotes for businesses and companies and I've also founded my own sports marketing agency and yeah coming back to your question question that's also why I'm not in a football administration but of course I'm still very close or football is still very close to my heart especially women's football and right now I'm happy with what I'm doing but who knows what the future brings I will not give up but I think it's a good message here to uh, maybe use difficult times like injuries also to think what will be next in life right I mean we all have to get ready for this moment that will come one day or the other yeah. and Vicky so you're here to do a job to talk about football as well um, you've seen this competition now um, yeah evolve as a few years ago you bladed how, how have you seen the evolution? And uh, we also saw we've got quite a few newcomers. Are there any bold predictions to be made? 
Um, putting you on the yeah. spot. Um, first of all, I think the change has been really um, amazing. And um, I think it was, even the last years, it was really exponential. Um, I don't know, if you look at the quality, the visibility, the popularity, um, I've experienced it myself and witnessed it in England, Germany. And yeah, I think that's, that's really amazing. And when I came here, when I flew here, I was thinking about that. Um, when I was a child, I really always loved to watch uh, Champions League and I had all these posters in my room um, of Luis Figo, Totti, of Zinedine Zidane and they were really my, my idols because back then I didn't know any female players and Champions League for women didn't exist and nowadays this, this has changed. I mean, young girls, I, I've seen it, young girls, they, they want to watch Alexia, Pop, um, me, Rena, whoever, and they can watch it. And I think that has been the most amazing change to me personally. And I think also in regards to the to the predictions, I I wouldn't dare to make yeah. any. There has already it's always been good some to stay surprises. neutral behind this desk. So, uh, everyone yeah. looks very reassured here. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I, I I think the competition it's a very uh, yeah it speaks for itself that there's been some surprises. It's a good quality. It's exciting. So I'm I'm curious. Vicky, thank you very much. We're super excited to have you. And we're one step closer to the draw, but let us take a quick look at the technical procedure, please. The 16 teams have been allocated to four pots in accordance with the following principles. Pot one comprises the UEFA Women's Champions League title holder and domestic champion of Spain, FC Barcelona and the domestic champions of France, Germany and England. The remaining 12 teams have been split into three pots, based on their position in the UEFA club coefficient rankings. Clubs from the same country cannot be drawn into the same group. Since the same number of UEFA Women's Champions League matches are played on both Tuesdays and Wednesdays, or on both Wednesdays and Thursdays, the groups are divided into two colours, red for groups A and B, and blue for groups C and D. The red groups will play on one match night, and the blue groups will play on the other. This will apply on all match days. For TV coverage reasons, every two teams from one country are paired in order to be split into the red and blue groups. For associations with three representatives, only two clubs will be paired. The teams of pot one will be drawn first. The four teams will be drawn and will be allocated to the four groups in alphabetical order, from group A to group D. For pot two, a ball will be drawn at random and opened to display the name. The computer will then show which groups are available for this club, in accordance with the established principles, such as country protection and TV pairings. A draw will then be made to determine which of these available groups the club is assigned to. It must be noted that the number of options available to a team depends not only on the team's own attributes and those of the teams already drawn, but also on the attributes of the other teams still to be drawn. This is due to the computer calculations needed to anticipate all possible scenarios and to prevent any deadlock situation. Once the four teams of pot two have each been allocated to a group, the same procedure will apply for pots three and four to complete all the groups. Once the draw procedure has been completed, a computer draw will determine the final position of the teams within each group, as the position in the group determines the match schedule. So the draw procedure is clear and long as usual. We all know how the draw works and our draw team is now also finally complete. Our senior women's, national, uh, senior women's competition manager, David Gaff, sneaked with us on stage. Thank you, David, for being with us. And before we kick us off, Vicky, I 
quickly repeat the teams in pot one. Pot one teams, the first pot we will draw is Barcelona, Olympique Lyonnais, FC Bayern and Chelsea. Vicky, please draw the first pot, stir the pot and draw the first team. The first team that will go into group A. And it is FC Barcelona. Fantastic. FC Barcelona, the reigning champions, go into Group A. Very clear, Vicky. Thank you very much. And please go on to the second team. Second team. It is Olympique Lyonnais. Lyon goes in pot, team, uh, pot B, our record title holder in this competition. And please tell us the next team will take position in Group C. It is... It is FC Bayern Munich. FC Bayern Munich goes into Group C. Fantastic. Mm. Last and one. now the last team, which will be, of course, it is Chelsea FC. Of course, Chelsea will be assigned to Group D. <clears throat> Fantastic. I quickly read out to everyone the teams in Pot 1. Uh, pot 2, Paris Saint-Germain, Slavia Braha, Real Madrid and Rosengard. Vicky, please stir the pot and tell us the next team. And now we need to slow down a bit. Perhaps we need a, another draw to allocate the group, depending on which restrictions apply. It is Slavia Praha. Slavia Praha can go into group A and B. So we'll do another draw. And now the burden is over to me. Yeah. Slavia Braha will join up. Group B. All right. Vicky, you can go ahead. Please tell us the next team. It is. Next team is Paris Saint Germain. And for Paris. Groups C and D are available, joining either Bayern or Chelsea. Gets more and more difficult. <laughs> Paris joins Group C together with Bayern. Fantastic. It's Paris' third group stage appearance already and tell us the next team please Vicky next one is Soon. two more groups available it is FC Rosengard it is Rosengard and Rosengard will be automatically allocated to group A therefore joining Barcelona so. last team will be also a direct allocation, of course. One more spot left. It is Real Madrid. And Real Madrid in the quarterfinals in 2022 will join Chelsea in Group D. Pot three consists of St. Pölten, Benfica, Bika Herken and AS Roma. And over again to you, over Vicky. Again. Conversations it is in the room. AS Roma. AS Roma. AS Roma can go into all groups. So let's see what final position we will find for Roma. They reached the quarter final in their debut season, which is fantastic, fantastic success in recent years for the AS Roma. And Roma will be going into Group C 
together with Bayern and Paris Saint-Germain. Thank you very much. David, next team, please, Vicky. So, next team is Benfica. Benfica, thank you very much. The champions of Portugal can go into group A and B. The final group for Benfica will be Group A together with Rosengart and Barcelona. Vicky, please tell us the next team. So, next team is PK Hecken. And they can only join. Group D, therefore there's a direct allocation for this team and we will therefore also know who will join Group B, but tell us the team. Hürgen joins Real Madrid and Chelsea. And it is SKN St. Pölten. St. Pölten will join Group B with Olympic Lyonnais and Slavia Bra. Fantastic, thank you Vicky. One more pot to go, we're almost in the end, but let's take a look at the teams. Ajax, Paris FC, the, the, the surprise team, Eintracht Frankfurt and SK Brann. Many newcomers in there. Please tell us the first team. First team, Eintracht Frankfurt. Eintracht Frankfurt can go into group A and B. Eintracht is also in their first group stage appearance in this new format. Incredible success. And Eintracht will be joining. The tension is rising. Group A. All right, together with Benfica, Rosengart and Barcelona. Thank you very much. Next team, three more to go. Before already, we bring it to another close of this group stage draw. Next team is Escabran. Escabran. Escabran can go into group B and C. The Norwegian champions and cup winners in their group stage debut. One of these teams that I mentioned, which is, and Bran goes to Group B. Next team, Ajax. Is Ajax, and Ajax will be automatically allocated to Group C and completes Group C because we know the last team in the pot <laughs> is Paris FC and we have to keep the position in Group D free. And it is Paris, Paris FC. FC. Exactly. Another newcomer in this competition at this stage of the competition. Vicky, fantastic. That was a, quite yep. a fast, superb job. And I will certainly re-invite you to do that more regularly with me. Thank, Thank you. you very much, everyone. Let's take a quick look at the results. Group A, Barcelona, FC Rosengard, Benfica and Eintracht. B, uh, Olympic Lyonnais, Slavia Braha, St. Pölten and SK Brann. In Group C, Bayern München, Paris Saint-Germain, as, as Roma and Ajax will compete against each other. And Group D consists of Chelsea, Real Madrid, Beka Hürgen and Paris FC. So, 
That's already the end of this year's group stage. I think lots of spicy matches to look forward to. I wish you all the very, very, very best of luck. We can't wait for the matches to start. And for everyone out there, it's the first time we play from November until the end of January. So please don't take a too long Christmas break and stay on the ball to watch this competition. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. The match schedule, very important. I already get a bit of a a uh, threatening look from my colleague here, will be available tomorrow morning. We do our best to be as quick as possible. Thank you very much and safe travels back. And Vicky, thank you again. Thank you.